Today we come to the third of our Christmas or rather Advent symbols, and that is the crib, which is a wonderful tradition, the, the, the building of the crib that we do in our homes, that we do in public places, if that's not being uh, stomped out, and uh, schools and so on. It's a very beautiful thing, the construction of the crib. It's a tradition that dates back, as you probably know, to St. Francis of Assisi. And for him, it really began by a visit to the Holy Land, to Bethlehem, that he recalled and he thought to himself, why not have a, have a, a replica of the manger in Bethlehem that he had visited? And he, he had a good friend, uh, Giovanni Felita, who had, um, had a cave in, in a little village of Greccio in Italy. And St. Francis invited him to, to help prepare for Christmas by the construction of a, a living crib, really, in this place. And so um, the place, this crib, this cave, like the cave in Bethlehem, was prepared with the, with the ox and an ass they were brought in, and then the straw, and, and then torches and candles. And, and then it kind of culminated in a, in a great evening procession when people came to the crib with their torches and candles singing. And it was such a huge, you could say, success uh, that, um, that it, well, ever since then, it's just gone through the world like wildfire. Fire. Something really very beautiful. So we think of the cribs that we construct in our, our own homes, which, anyway, it is, it, is a, it is a tradition which has been very much encouraged. Don't lose sight of this, this tradition. It's a wonderful little tradition. Because in a certain sense, what we're doing when we construct a crib, it's a little world that, uh, uh, either it's, Bethlehem and Jerusalem, the background, or a forest, they're all so different. A forest or, or whatever it is, is, is kind of a little world in itself. And then in that you have a cave or a stable, that tiny little place where we have those f very few figures, Our Lady, St. Joseph, the ox, the ass, and then maybe in the distance coming, the shepherds, and further back, the wise men. It's such a, a, a simple thing. And yet it is such a rich symbol and such a useful symbol. This is something that Pope Benedict said about the, this symbol. He said, from a theological point of view, Easter is the center of the church year. In other words, Easter really is the feast of feasts. It's the, the most important feast, liturgically speaking. However, Christmas kind of trumps it in a certain way. This is what he says. This is why he, why it trumps it. He says, but Christmas is the most profoundly human feast of faith because it allows us to feel most deeply the humanity of God. The crib has a unique power to show us what it means to say that God wished to be Emmanuel, a God with us. It's a fantastic point. Christmas, okay, it doesn't have the same theological importance as Easter. However, it's certainly more, I think for all of us, more heartwarming. I think we all love Christmas. I personally love Christmas. And in that way, I do prefer it to Easter. It is very heartwarming. And that heartwarming character of Christmas is brought out by the crib, showing us the humanity of Christ. We feel, as, he, as Pope Benedict says, we feel through the crib most deeply the humanity of God. And that is what those people back in Greccio, back in the 13th century, uh, they, they really felt that Pope uh, St. Francis, rather, St. Francis had managed to communicate to them. We don't know, in fact, if, if it was a, a, a living baby, actually, in the crib in Greccio, or whether it was a uh, a little carving, even though there is a, 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 there is some people claimed actually in Greccio that the little child had come alive. So there would have been a, a wooden little figurine and that it had actually come alive. It's kind of nice. And either way, whether it's just a story 
parts true. It is it is true in another way that that in every little crib that we have, the humble ones maybe constructed by by children in a home or the big official ones in in a public place in a city, or the the, the one in St Peter's Square, or these all these crimes, no matter where it is, in a, in a certain sense, the the child in it does come alive for us. The small little infant that we put in there on 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 Christmas on the night of Christmas Eve. And it does kind of come alive. And we do see then you, Lord, coming, wanting to come into my heart, despite it being this humble little stable, this little cave. It's not really up to very much. And yet you, in your kindness and your goodness, come into this little stable of mine with its with its donkey and its cow and it's all this and you want to come in there despite all of that and you want to come in as a human being as a, as a human baby which is really so amazing for us and we have that lovely name then of the God who does this Emmanuel God with us God with us not just as God but God with us as a tiny tiny infant well what could be more beautiful than that what could be more heartwarming than contem contemplating that scene each year in the crib. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.